We all love cinematic car shots. For many years this type of camera movement was only reserved to professional film productions. But today all you need to do is grab your gimbal and find a good angle. But remember the most important thing, do it safely. However, there are some situations where handheld use is quite difficult or even impossible. Fast driving, off-road, small space cars, low angle shots or camera in front. The solution to this problem is the spring arm car mount and its ability to absorb all movement and vibration that no gimbal can handle. You will find dozens of these arms on the market, but mainly for large sets. And again, here comes the Tilta. Tilta released a brand new car mount system for RS2. In my opinion, it's a really great piece of gear, but I'm not a big fan of collecting equipment, especially if I use it occasionally. Besides, I prefer rock solid clamps more than suction cups. So I have a pretty cool idea. Like I said, the car mount system is actually a spring arm that absorbs all unnecessary movements. It works almost like Steadicam, right? So I looked at my spring arm from the previous episode and I was wondering what if I take only one part of the arm and attach some kind of universal mount on one side and the gimbal on the other. With this solution we get two great pieces of equipment in one and almost for free. As you remember, my arm and vest cost me 250, a few extra stuff cost me 150, and now I have a Steadicam and car mount system for $400. Crazy deal! And another great feature, if you need to use both of them on the same shooting day, I have good news because converting from one to the other takes me only 3 minutes. Ok, so what do we need? Steadicam spring arm, 2 large clamps, 4 small clamps, two pieces of aluminum tube with cross connector, damper, mounting plate, keep clamps and battery. I recommend that an arm that can hold 5 kg or more, mine is a 5 kg version and with an additional spring from the last episode holds 7 kg without any problems. Actually I don't need a second spring in this case, but I leave it as an extra safety. The most complicated and difficult thing we have to do are adapters for attaching the clamps on both sides of the arm. Almost all spring arms have a similar design, but they are slightly different from each other, so I do not have a universal solution, but I'm going to show you mine and I hope it can work for most of you. I also realize that for many of you it might seem quite difficult, but don't worry, you can ask someone from the local workshop for help, they will definitely do it for you. So I made the adapter from a rectangular aluminum tube. You can order it in any size you want. To put it on the arm I had to drill 4 holes and exactly the same ones in the aluminum adapter to be able to connect them together. Then I made 8mm holes in the first adapter to attach the large clamps and 6mm in the second adapter to the small clamp for RS2. I painted them black to make it look better. I put the clamps on the adapters and they are basically ready. Now I can quickly and easily attach them to my spring arm without any tools. For universal mounting of the entire arm we will use two 50mm aluminum clamps. They are super solid and it's a kind of standard size so they are available everywhere. The second tube clamps are 30mm, we will use them to attach the tube extension for the Ronin on the other side. Here you have the choice, Showtech or Keep clamps. I mentioned them in the first episode, they are the cheapest and best small clamps on the market. We will make a Ronin mount extension from tubes and cross connector. We need this because we want to push the gimbal a little bit forward so it doesn't have a chance to hit the arm. We only need two pieces of 25cm aluminum tubes and keep cross connector. We want to build a 2-in-1 adapter that will be a vibration isolator and a kind of pendulum mount. We need this because we have two problems to solve. The first problem are vibrations while driving. The second one, we do not want to use a standard hard mount because this type of mounting creates too much tension and stress on the connections and motors, especially when driving fast. Of course you can use many types of absorbers, but see what I found and look how it works. It absorbs all my movements, it is like a self-leveling grip, super durable and it doesn't rotate. I would say it's almost perfect and you will be surprised where I found it. Actually, it is a gearbox element from the bust. Hard to believe, but for $25 you won't find anything that good. We mount it directly to the base plate on one side and with Showtech or Keep clamps on the other side. But there is also a small problem. 
it has no resistant adjustment, which means that sometimes it can sway too much. So for an extra $25, I added four tiny RC car spring. You can even mount them with plastic ties only, it will be okay, but a better solution is a small angle bracket. Guys, a little update here. I would like to show you more complicated stuff from my video as a step-by-step -step photo tutorial on my Facebook page. I think it will be more clear for you, besides we will not waste time on small details like here for example. It is a very easy but it looks complicated because there are so many small parts here, so let me know what you think about it. We want to mount the Ronin without the original battery grip for two reasons. The base plate for RS2 is much safer because you mount it on two or three screws and it has a stiffener. You can choose between an expansion base kit or a tilta base plate. If you have the expansion kit, that's great because the kit includes an external handle so you have full control while sitting in your car. But if you have a tilta, it's not a problem because you can control it with your smartphone or even with a remote controller. For me personally, an additional handle from the expansion base kit is the best solution because in combination with the Tilta Nucleus, I have control over the focus, iris, record button and running movement, so basically I have everything in one hand. However, many of you have problems with Tilta Focus because their 5 voltage running output is too weak and the motor doesn't work properly with many lenses. So if you have this problem, you can add a small power bank to power the motor and it will be okay. I don't have this problem so far and I power my Focus motor from the Raven Eye USB port. In this case, we also have a few ways. We can use the original battery, but also a wide range of other batteries, such as TP50, V-mount Ronin 1 batteries, and many, many others. But remember, for those batteries, you need a power cable with pit-up connector. It's a kind of brake for a spring arm. It's not a necessary element, but we need it in case of very bumpy roads. It is designed to calm down the dynamic movements of the spring, it creates some kind of resistance and the war arms does not jump like crazy. Damper is actually a motorcycle part, it is a steering stabilizer and cost me $48. To mount it on the arm we need to make two screw holes, I think I found the best position about 2 cm from the beginning of the top section and 60 cm from the beginning of the bottom section. We need to put the spring arm to the 50mm pipe, then L-shaped extension attached to the front of the arm, super easy, lock the clamps. Next is the adapter for Ronin. We mount it using two Showtech and two Keep clamps. Then we put the Ronin, mount the stiffener, connect the power supply and this time we will make auto-tuning on the arm because I noticed that the Ronin sets motor power completely different when it is mounted off the shock absorber than when it is on a hand grip, probably because there are differences in the flexibility of these two mounts. Done, let's do some tests. Guys, in the case of mounting the gimbal on a car, there are so many important things to discuss that I will do another episode about it because I would like to talk very precisely about safety issue and I don't want to miss anything. But don't worry, almost any car is good for it. In my case, I use the original screw on the roof as the base for each mount. Put clamps and 50mm tube on them and now I can attach anything I want in any direction. As I said, I prefer rock-solid clamps and tubes mainly for safety reasons, but also huge and wide possibilities of mounting the arm almost anywhere in the car, and even on the other things such as bicycle, motorcycle or quad bike. Guys, I had a feeling this arm might work pretty well with RS2, but I didn't think it would be almost perfect. See how it works in combination with super smooth mode, and this is also the perfect time for you to click the subscribe button. The spring arm with RS2 is great for all kinds of situations so far. Dynamic driving, bumpy road, I still need to check how it will handle off-road, but probably not with this car. I also have to mention that RS2 is a really unique and revolutionary gimbal for this type of work. Because if you are a one-man band, you can safely take great shots, be a driver and operator because we have a Raven Eye and active track mode. 
which works fantastic in this situation. You set a track point and just drive. You are completely focused on driving and the Aeros 2 does the rest for you. So I didn't change my mind, RS2 is the best small game boy in the universe, I have no doubts about it. Quick installation, amazing control and power possibilities, universal mounting solutions, many ways of creative use, you can be a super fast camera dolly but also a slow slider. And if you are a single operator it's no problem right now, you don't need a whole crew or assistants to take amazing shots, but always be sure to do it with a high level of safety for you and the people around you. Ok guys, hope you enjoyed this episode, thanks for so many nice messages and comments and see you in the next one.